While most people stick to the same shoelacing method that their shoes come with, there exists a near infinite number of possibilities for shoelacing. Shoes can be laced for comfort, utility, or for fashion, in order to tighten your shoes, loosen them, or to create an interesting style that can serve as a conversation starter. While there are a number of shoelacing methods to match every need and every pair of shoes, Factsverse presents five of the coolest ways to tie your shoelaces. Number 5. The Straight Bar This method is popular for Vans and other skate shoes. The straight bar lace is simple, comfortable, and appealing to the eye. It modifies the fit of the shoe by reducing the pressure on the top of the foot, so it's great if your feet swell or if your shoes are a little too tight at the laces because of shrinking. It also is an incredibly easy lace to learn and can be used for any shoes that have an even number of eyelet pairs – 8, 10, etc. – and even if your shoes have an odd number of pairs, the lacing can be modified to accommodate that. This method is also good if your laces are a bit short and annoying to tie, as that will leave more lace at the end. Number 4. Biker or Hiker Lace This lace is another straight bar lace, but it's intended for riding bikes or hiking instead. This is a good lacing for bikers because it'll make sure that your strings aren't caught in your bike. The shoe is laced in such a way that instead of the two ends meeting in the middle at the top of the shoe, they both protrude from the last two eyelets on the outside of the shoe in order to be tied at the side, making it impossible for your laces to get caught in the gears or chain of your bicycle. For hiking, lace the shoe so that the ends of the lace come out the inside of the shoes to prevent your lace from snagging on foliage. Like the straight bar, this lacing method only works on shoes with an even number of eyelet pairs but can be modified to accommodate an odd number of eyelet pairs. Number 3. Sawtooth The sawtooth method is a straight bar that has a little bit of an edge to it. While the laces on the exterior of the shoe are laced in a straight bar, the laces on the inside intersect diagonally to create a striking appearance that looks good on any shoe. Another benefit of the sawtooth method is that it modifies the fit of the shoes so that they are tighter and the lacing can be flipped to tighten whichever side of the shoe you want. This provides a great compromise between fashion and function without sacrificing durability, lace length, or comfort. Number 2. Checkerboard Lacing This is a good lacing method when putting shoes on display or if your shoes have a checkerboard pattern to match. The downside to this lacing method is that it leaves the laces significantly longer and the lacing itself is very loose due to the fact that this lacing method is impossible to tie. The effect is created by one lace that is laced through the eyelets and loosely tucked into the shoe, and the other is only tucked into the shoe. It's good for slip-ons or display, but not any type of athletic activity or extensive walking at all. Number 1. Woven Lacing the most elaborate and decorative lacing method on this list is also the most challenging and least practical. Woven lacing gives your shoelaces an almost fabric-like quality on the front of the shoe as you lace them in and out of the weave. The benefit of this lacing is that it looks awesome, but the downside is that the lacing falls apart when your shoes aren't tied and cuts down the length of your laces, making a shoe knot more difficult to tie and maintain if you don't have incredibly long laces. Like the checkerboard method, there's really no way to tighten the lace, so it's best used for slip-on shoes or for special occasions. Subscribe for more! Oh, shoelace french fries. Oh man, that sounds good right now, doesn't it? Yeah.